I am testing and reconditioning my bank of deep cycle batteries here and battery number two was weak in my first load test so I have this on my equalization charger setup which is a little hokey but it works just great and my multimeter here is at about 15 volts that's the voltage that I chose to equalize them at that's usually a pretty good voltage for this sort of thing uh, if you have a lead antimony style battery it outgasses pretty aggressively so you may want to uh, bump the voltage down a little bit to avoid acid splattering around but it uh, has worked pretty well I've had this running for uh, about two hours normally I'd let it run for a little bit longer but it is late outside the crickets are up and I should not be so I'm gonna cut this just a little bit short and move on to the next step hopefully the equalization has done its job on the current reading on this charger uh, not sure if you can see it or not but the current did go from a little over two to uh, just over one amp so that would indicate that this battery is either equalizing properly, that last cell is getting charged up, or the sulfation on the cells in this battery uh, is getting desulfa uh, is breaking down. The sulfation is breaking down, turning back into the proper kind of lead, uh, raising the, uh, the acid concentration in the battery, and it no longer passes as much current. Either way, it's a good thing. The current reading on my meter here, keeping this at 15 volts approximately, is showing that it's doing its job. So I'm not done yet though, because now it's time for bed, and what I want to do with this battery overnight is to put it on a high float voltage overnight, and then tomorrow I can retest this battery and see how much better it performs. Or maybe it'll perform worse, I don't know, that's why I'm doing the test. But this should recondition the battery well enough to make it usable again. We'll see if I'm right or not tomorrow. But I want to put this on a float voltage. And what voltage do I choose? Well, it depends again on what kind of battery you have. If you have a flooded battery that has caps that you can remove on top, you can safely float it at a higher voltage because you can always add more water. Not a big deal. On these, I can't. Now, if you read the label down here, they give you a float voltage, and they recommend about 13.7 uh, volts, I believe it is, for the float voltage. Now, keep in mind, these are designed for a 15-year life. Now, you could leave it at 13.5, uh, a little higher voltage, for 15 straight years. I'm just leaving it overnight, so I can safely leave it at a higher voltage. It's not going to affect its life whatsoever. Now, if you had a lead antimony battery, I would recommend about 14 volts. If you had lead calcium, I would recommend about 14.4. You can treat these pretty well uh, similarly to lead antimony. So I'm going to bump my float voltage down to about 14 volts. I have my charger connected up through this variable auto transformer. So I'm just going to crank this down a little bit. And watch my output voltage droop down. Now, batteries like this do have a very, very slow response rate in terms of uh, their, their chemical makeup. It will take quite a bit of time for this voltage to settle down. I cranked the voltage, the uh, voltage on my charger down, but this is going to keep, I wish this thing would stop recalibrating, and this thing will keep dropping slowly over time. So for the next five minutes or so, I'm just going to keep an eye on it until that voltage has stabilized at around 14 volts. And once it has, I'm just going to leave this set up, go to bed, and uh, in the morning I'm going to unhook it, I'll go to work. And when I come back home from work, I will retest this battery, and we'll see if I've been successful or not. Now, this is quite a bit of work. Uh, I've only gotten one battery done. I've made this video, which has taken quite a bit of time. And I have all of these batteries to go. Hopefully they won't all be as difficult as battery number two. But uh, regardless, I enjoy tinkering around with this sort of thing. And uh, if you don't mind it yourself, then you can pretty easily recondition a set of batteries like this and get what essentially is uh, $2,000 worth of batteries sitting here on my floor uh, to be a pretty good battery bank again, I think. Or at least that's my goal. We'll find out. Anyway, I'll come back tomorrow and we'll continue this video. And while I'm at it, battery number five 
but also read a little bit low in voltage, 12.8 uh, or something. So I just hooked that up to my charger again, and I'm going to let that one float at uh, whatever this charger decides to float at. I think it's about 13.5 volts. Uh, it did go into a fast charge mode, you can tell by the blinking light down there. So this is actually going to do a little bit of equalization too, which is good. And hopefully that'll bring uh, number 5 back up a little bit before I test it. So just getting a little bit of a jump start. Numbers 3 and 4 look pretty good in terms of voltage. Um, and I'm just going to do this to number 5 and hopefully that prevents me from having to go through all of this rigmarole. But just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, we'll come back tomorrow and go back to battery number 2. I have my float charger set up on this battery. It's been there for about 8 hours overnight. It's the next morning, it's time to go to work, so what I'm going to do is disconnect this and let the battery sit open circuit while I'm at work, and tonight I will see if the voltage in this battery sagged back down or if it held. Now, it is pretty good news overall. My charger over here with this meter is pretty low resolution, but you can see that it's only drawing maybe half an amp, if that, uh, so the uh, charge current went down. That would indicate that the battery either equalized and or some of the sulfation went away since the current dropped. It's also not outgassing quite as much as it used to be. And we'll see if this battery has been reconditioned well enough to make uh, battery number two usable again. I'm also going to take my uh, smart charger over here on the floor and connect it up to the next weakest battery while I'm at it. Uh, just let that uh, run in this float mode. While I'm at work, it'll do something, help a little bit at least. And we'll come back and we'll see what happens. I'm back from work and it has actually been about 10 hours since I've disconnected that float charger from this battery. And let's see what voltage this battery is still at. See if it held its voltage or if it has some other problem. 12.95. So that is acceptable. I was hoping for more than 13 volts. It indicates that this battery may have some sulfation or something left over, but 12.95 is fine. So let's do the same thing once again. I have my inverter connected up to this battery and my electric heater over here. So let's see if this battery now has more capacity than it did before to see if my reconditioning method has worked or has failed. So we'll go over to the inverter over here, turn this on, and my heater is now drawing its uh, 80 amps or so, and after one minute I will record the voltage on this battery and see if the internal resistance of this battery is improved. And you can see already that this particular battery is doing much better than it was. The initial voltage started a little bit higher than it did, but more importantly, at the one minute mark, the voltage was much, much better. This is at uh, 11.9 volts instead of 11.7, and you can see that it matches up extremely well with battery number one. In fact, it's exactly the same, 11.92 volts. So we're going to see what happens at the 5, 10, 15 minute mark and such, and see if it lasts for 48 minutes or so like battery number one did. Now some of you may be looking at this and seeing that the first battery at 75 to 80 amps only lasted 48 minutes. These are 100 amp hour batteries, so why did I only get 60 or 70 amp hours out of it? Well, these batteries are rated for actually about uh, 113, I believe, amp hours at a C over 20 rate, which is very, very good. Most cheap batteries are rated at a C over 20 rate or even a C over 100 rate to make them look better than they really are. These batteries are a 100 amp hour battery at a reasonable discharge rate. Now, 48 minutes, uh, if you look at the specification, you should get about 70 amp hours out of, a bat out of this battery at 80 amps. And I got a little bit less than that out of it, but that's because not because the battery is bad, but because my inverter shuts down at 10.5 volts. And uh, there's some voltage droop and such in the cables, so really it's stopping the discharge at about... Ah, got a mosquito in here. 
stopping the discharge at about uh, at 10.7 volts, so it cuts that a little bit short. Uh, so 48 minutes really is very, very good. If I get 48 minutes out of the rest of these, I'll consider this a perfect battery bank. So I've had a bunch of bugs bothering me recently in my generator video and now in this one. And I just wanted to mention that uh, this is not a product placement ad. However, I really like this brand, CV80D. Go ahead and use this and all of the bugs around you will be dead. Goodbye, gnats. And in case you're wondering why this stuff is so good, pyrethrins, 0.5%. Most stuff that you buy has only one-tenth that much. Uh, this stuff is pretty concentrated, and pyrethrins are actually what they use in the food service industry to kill insects in a working kitchen, so it's very, very safe stuff. Uh, it also has this other stuff at 4% that's actually a metabolizer, uh, metabolism, inhibitor uh, that uh, blocks the insect's ability to metabolize the toxin. In any case, this is extremely safe stuff, but it works very well, so I'd recommend it. Country Vet CV80D. It's been five more minutes, and that gnat doesn't seem to be bothering me anymore. And after 10 minutes, the voltage is 11.79 volts. Last time was 11.61, so once again, the battery is doing very well. I'm going to let this run for a while longer, and uh, we'll see how it does. Well, unfortunately, it only lasted 27 minutes before it shut down. And uh, that's not much longer than it was before, to at 23 minutes. Now, when I disconnected the load, it did go up to more than 12 volts open circuit. So that indicates that it has a much higher internal resistance than it should have and that is representative of a sulfated battery. So this battery I would very much like to just put under a, uh, a desulfation uh, cycle, which is just a high voltage overcharge condition for a long period of time. However, because this is a AGM sealed battery, I can't do that without destroying it. So what I'm going to do instead is charge this battery back up and tomorrow I will try the same thing again and see if I get a longer discharge cycle than, uh, than what I got this time. If you cycle a battery enough times, the sulfation will break up over time and uh, hopefully that will improve the performance somewhat. However, like I mentioned, it's the internal resistance that's too high. These batteries are rated for 5 milliohms of internal resistance. This one apparently has much more because, like I said, it was still at 12 volts open circuit. So if I discharge this at a much slower rate, which is what would happen when I put 10 batteries in parallel, it will still be a pretty useful battery. So I'm not too concerned about it that way, but I would like to try this one more time to see if I can improve its performance a little bit uh, before I give up and go on to the next battery. <laughs> 